Hey guys, welcome back for a new video. Today, let's talk about brake lever and what is the correct way to set them up. The correct way to set up your brake lever is actually to find what works for you. Your setup on your brake lever has a huge impact on your riding, but also on your confidence. And I see way too many people out there that have a setup that doesn't work for them. So let's fix that. As many of you have noticed, my brake lever are actually set up really high. So I wanted to do that video for you to understand the thinking behind that, because I believe that could help out a ton of riders out there to really step up their riding. I would say that braking control is something I'm really confident with and really comfortable. And it's probably uh, one of my top skills. In the past, that allowed me to compete uh, several times at Red Bull Rampage and also to ride some of the gnarliest trails in the world. For today's video, we are back in beautiful Squamish on top of a double black trail called Weso. I've done a trail preview of it, so check it out in the description. We're also gonna ride a couple of other super cool trail around, so stay tuned. And in terms of bikes, I've chosen to ride my Cube Stereo 150, so 29 wheels, Ace Dominion A4 brakes. And if you have any question about the product, check out the description. I've put a list of every single of the parts uh, and components I'm riding. First step to set up your brake lever is to put your hand correctly on your grips. So myself, I put my hand at the very edge of the grip. I'm riding the Ergon grip and they have that uh, extra uh, rubber and a little uphill. So what it makes is that it's more comfortable and that way my hand doesn't slide of the bars. In the past, I've had grips with a lock on and what it does is that my uh, little finger can go numb so I had to run more on the inside of the bar. The problem when you do that is that you got that extra material that might touch a tree and it's harder to be precise with your riding so that's something I didn't like about them. Another thing really important is you'll see many people riding with their hand on the inside of the bar and what that makes me think is that their handlebars are too wide for them. Keep in mind, when you buy an handlebar, you are supposed to cut it to what feels right for you. Obviously, not everybody has to cut the bar, but if you're a smaller guy and you buy a bar like this that comes in 800 mm, most likely you should run it at 750 or 760. To give you an example, I'm 5 foot 7 and I run 750 mm bars on my trail bikes. Next step to set up your brake lever, you want to know how many fingers you're going to be using to activate the brake. And there is only one good answer and it's one finger. With one finger, you got plenty of power, you got a better modulation than if you are to use two fingers. And also, I mean, if, if everything is right, you should still have four fingers left uh, to hold on to the grip, which means more grip strength. The finger you're going to be using is this guy. You want the finger to work in the same axles than your forearm. That way you can get more power, more modulation and more endurance. With my hand correctly placed on the grip, with my finger walking in the same direction as my forearm, with my setup, I have about 5 mm between the grip and the brake. Obviously this changes depending on what brand of grip, what brand of brakes you're riding and also the size of your hands. Next step, and probably the most important one, what angle should your brake lever have? Well, many people make the mistake, they want to set up their brakes to be, uh, you know, the right position for everything. Uphill, flat, downhill. Well, to me, this is a mistake because technically you should be using your brakes only when you go downhill. Of course, you might sometimes use them uh, when you go on technical uphill, but most of the time, you focus on your braking when you go downhill, which is why you should set them up for that particular purpose. So the terrain you are riding uh, impact your body position and impact your brake lever position. Uh, actually, the steeper the trails are, the higher I run my brakes. This is basically my base setup, uh, but it happens to ride you know, steeper and long trails where I'm gonna put my uh, brake lever higher. Then if I go and ride to a place that's you know, a bit flatter, I might put my brake lever slightly down. Why? Because the steeper the trails are, 
the more time you're gonna spend on the rear of the bike and that's when you're gonna want to be uh, braking. So when you are on the bike, the closer from the rear axle, your center of gravity is lower. And if your brake lever are too low, it's actually harder to reach them. Whereas if they are high enough, you're in a very comfortable position, you feel safe and you can modulate them uh, nicely to successfully ride on it. As you may have seen in my channel, I'm riding a lot of steep, technical, gnarly downhill track and I'm also riding a lot in what we call neutral position. So what is that neutral position? Neutral position is when you basically ride super tall on your bike. Straight legs, hips far back and shoulder above the bars. And I really enjoy that body position. Why? Because that allows me to look super far ahead. So I can anticipate, see what feature is coming and, uh, and really react faster on what body position I should have. So that's the first thing. Second thing is that's pretty effortless. Uh, to me, that's the best way to save energy when riding downhill. Uh, and you can ride really relaxed. And the last thing I really enjoy about it is that bends my wrist a little bit because my shoulders are above the bars and my brake lever are so high. So when your wrists are bent, all your weight pushes onto the, onto the grips and that way you don't have to do nearly as much uh, effort to hold onto your grip. You don't need as much grip strength and you can really relax more. And I think my video shows that uh, pretty good. So it's something that I really enjoy about it and one of the main reasons why I run my brake lever so high. So another benefit of riding higher brake lever, and it's something that not many people mention, is that when your brake lever are higher, your elbow are actually out a little bit more. When you are riding with your elbows out, what it does is that you feel more stable on your bike, you are more planted, and you also get a better mobility so you can move your bike uh, faster and more easily. Another last thing is that because your elbows are out, you can hold on to your bike a bit more and you feel stronger. So you can basically um, do bigger landings, take bigger hits, bigger compression, so you can go faster while being safer. As some of you may know, I actually struggle a bit with arm perms, so I got compartment syndrome on both forearms, uh, which is why I have those scars, if you are wondering. And I've tried so many things, and really the things that help me the most, I would say, is having my brake lever uh, eye like this, that way I can ride more relaxed. Uh, there is other stuff I obviously do. Uh, with suspension, I run like a higher front end, just to have uh, less weight on my hands and more on my legs. Uh, but, you know, having my brake lever is something that definitely helps me a lot. Now, obviously, there is the pros of that setup and the cons. And the only cons I can actually think of are for people who have wrist injuries or a fragile wrist. Why? Because that bend on your wrist can create potentially pain uh, and fatigue. So if it's the case for you, just be super progressive with your setup. Uh, slowly move up uh, the brakes and if it gets uncomfortable put them back to where it was uh, but it's something that's quite common so watch out for that finishing this video I'm gonna let you know a little bit more about uh, the setup of my lever in terms of reach and free stroke hey buddy so the reach is basically the distance between uh, your lever and the grip and the free stroke is the distance or the travel I would say of uh, the lever so basically how much it moves when you engage it. So my two brakes are set up differently this is my front brake, rear brake. Uh, the front brake has a role that I would say is more important than your rear brake. Why? Because there is so much more weight going onto the front wheel that the front brake is actually the one that stops you whereas the rear brake is the one that just slows you down and helps you to control your speed. Uh, so I run my front brake and my rear brake different as they have different purpose uh, when I'm riding. I like to have a smaller reach on my front brake and a tighter feel. Uh, why? Because I don't need as much modulation. And I've noticed that when you have more free stroke, so like this on my rear brake, uh, you basically can modulate the power a bit more easily. So more free stroke, more reach on my rear brake. And the reason why I have a smaller reach on the front brake is because I want both brakes to bite at the same time. So when I'm on an off-camber rock face or a difficult situation, I know exactly where both brakes are gonna bite and it's really important for me that way I don't get confused 
and uh, that makes my riding more precise, safer, and just better. Okay, let's go. As always with settings, the best thing you can do for yourself is to experiment. So try new things, play with the setup, see what works and see what doesn't. Thanks for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment below with the next tip you want to learn. And if you want to support this channel, you can click on any of the link in the description below. See you on YouTube or see you on the trails.